Let's go ahead and um, jump into the word. I'm going to be reading from James chapter 5 this morning. And uh, I know it's kind of dark here, but if you have your app, it has a little illumination. We're going to be reading from James chapter 5. Hopefully Nate can put it on the screen for me. Nate has also already put the clock up there, so don't worry, I won't run over. <laughs> James chapter 5, I'm going to ask you to stand as we read his holy word and reverence of his holy word. Something about standing and reading the word is to give it the reverence that it deserves that God spoke to these men of God and gave them what is our roadmap and our direction. So James chapter 5, I'm going to start at verse 8. I'm reading for the New Living Translation. Verse 8 says, you too must be patient. Take courage, for the coming of the Lord is near. Don't grumble about each other, brother and sisters, or you will be judged. For look, the judge is standing at the door. Verse 10, for examples of patience and suffering, dear brothers and sisters, look at the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. We give great honor to those who endure under suffering. For instance, you know about Job, a man of great endurance. You can see how the Lord was kind to him at the end. For the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. Verse 12, but most of all, my brothers and sisters, never take an oath by heaven or earth or anything else. Just say a simple yes or no, so that you will not stand, so you will not sin and be condemned. Are any of you suffering hardships? Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Verse 16, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Elijah was a human as we are, and yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. Then he prayed again, and the sky sent down rain, and the earth began to yield its crops. My dear brothers and sisters, if someone is among you, wanders away from the truth, and is brought back, you can be sure that whoever brings the sinner back from wandering will save that person from death and bring about the forgiveness of many sins. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your word this morning. Help it to bring life to us, God, today. Healing and hope, God. Help us to hear your word and receive, God. Help us not to be led astray by our own devices and our own our will and our own way, but to seek your law and your decrees, God, and so that we may succeed in all that we do for you. We just thank and we praise you. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord. Our strength and our Redeemer, forgive us now, Lord, so we may be worthy of your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may have a seat. Amen. So the July series we've been talking about is uh, Jay walking through James. And so this morning I'm going to speak from the context of uh, how to cross this road. And so um, you, you, most of you know me, some of you know me, those that do not know me, I'm a nerd, I'm a little bit of a nerd. Um, I used to teach high school. Uh, <laughs> Yes, that takes a special anointing. Uh, <laughs> I used to teach math, so that just kind of solidifies the fact that I'm a nerd. Um, I also used to teach journalism, uh, so that even more solidifies that I'm a nerd to teach two different subjects. And so I did some research when I was thinking about this, and I was praying and, and studying, and so I did some research on jaywalking, right? Because you've heard of jaywalking, right? It's pretty much when somebody crosses a road or a street unlawfully and without regard to any approaching traffic, right? We know the common spots here in Orlando, kind of like uh, anywhere on, on Silver Star Road, Hawassi. You know, you always see somebody running around <laughs> across the road there. You've seen this before. You've almost seen probably somebody get hit before. Um, we're all on a journey in life. The question is, are we going in the direction that God has us to go? Are we crossing the road where he'll have us cross? Are we reading his map, which is the Bible? Are we obeying the signs and signals that he gives through revelation? Are we listening to his word, the spirit? Are we regarding the traffic? 
that's coming our way, the things that are coming that could take our life out, that could take us out. Are we, are we jaywalking? Uh, I also kind of was wondering, like, where did jaywalking really even start, right? So I did some more research on the internet, you know, so take it for what it's worth, right? It's the internet. But jaywalking, they said, started in the 1920s, around the times where cars were, like, becoming mass-produced, right? So if you can imagine in cities before cars, everyone walked, or, or a horse and buggy, right? So it didn't really matter. It was kind of hard to get hit by a horse and buggy. You, you saw the horse coming. You smelled the horse coming. It was a horse and buggy. But when cars started coming around, then people started being in the way of the cars. And so the car industry actually uh, created the word jaywalking, right? So they created the word jaywalking, and the word jaywalking came from, it was a short of the word blue jay, right? You know what blue jays are, the birds that make a lot of noise. But it was from a person who came from the country to the big city and was so dazzled by the lights and the windows and the big uh, stores and everything that they got in the way of traffic and almost got hit. So they called them and they empty headed like a blue jay. And so they were jaywalking. They were in the way. And so they were causing issues with the traffic. And for a while there, they were saying the cars need to watch out for them. And then they said, no, 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 the people need to watch out for the cars. And they started making laws where people needed to watch out for the cars. And that's why you can get the ticket in most places in America for jaywalking. For not paying attention to what's going on with the traffic. So nowadays, we see people doing their own thing, running across the road. And I thought about it, it's like a lot of times when people do that, either they're impatient, right? They're in a hurry, or they just don't care. Especially the ones, uh, the, you know, where they're just kind of walking slow and it's like, you see me coming, you know, it's a green light. I really need you to move now. I'm not trying to be nasty, but it's a green light. You're not at the crosswalk. You were only 100 feet away from the crosswalk. I don't understand why you just couldn't stand in the crosswalk. All right, so a lot of times sometimes people don't care. People are impatient, people are busy. And such as in life, sometimes we jaywalk through life because we're too busy, we're impatient, or we lack the care. But the rules have been set in place for the jaywalkers. The signs have been made for the jaywalkers so they can get from one side of the road to the next safely so they can get to their destination safely. God has left his word, God has left his spirit so we can get from one side of the road to the next, one place in our life to the next safely, alive, thriving still. So in the book of James here, I'm gonna kind of dive in here. James was right into all of the believers everywhere. It was a little different than, than Paul, because you know, Paul kind of wrote to the people of Corinthians, uh, the people of Corinth, right, which were the Corinthians. Paul wrote to the people of Ephesus, that's where we get Ephesians, right? But James was writing to believers everywhere. So James had a message for everybody here. And this particular passage isn't necessarily written for the context of everyday life. You know, there's some things that every day, you know, the Bible kind of refers to, like he daily gives us, us um, daily loaded us with benefits, give us this day our daily bread. This particular passage, I think, was kind of written for those hard times, those stormy days, those stormy nights, the cloudy days. This particular time, this particular passage, I feel like was written for when the traffic is coming your way. And it's time for you to cross this road. So in verse 8, it says, you too must be patient. Take courage, for the coming of the Lord is near. And the Amplified Version, it says, you too be patient. Strengthen your heart. Keep them energized and firmly committed to God, because the coming of the Lord is near. Keep energized. Don't be lazy. Go to the crosswalk where God will have you to cross this road. Go to the word where God will have you be energized and strengthened so you can cross this road. Be encouraged. It says be patient. Take courage. So I'm going to give you some do's and don'ts today um, because we've all seen the crosswalk sign, right? Let's see if, um, Nate, you have it. Hopefully, yeah, you've seen it before, right? Usually both of them aren't illuminated at the same time, but this is just for illustrative purposes, right? So the hand means what? 
stop or don't walk, right? And the little walking man means walk, right? So in this passage, God has given us some things that kind of helps us get across that road and this hardship or whatever we're going through in our lives right now. In verse 9, it says, don't grumble about each other's brothers and sisters or you will be judged. For look, the judge is standing at the door. In the Amplified Bible, it says, don't complain against one another, believers, so you will not be judged for it. When the going gets tough, you don't need to get rough. When things aren't going your way, it doesn't mean that you can curse me out. When you woke up late, you running late, your car on E, doesn't mean that you can just pass by me and give me the side eye. It doesn't give you the authority or the right or the, the ammunition to just not be the light of who God wants you to be in this earth. Amen? This verse says that you will be judged by God for how you deal with people no matter how your situation may be. No matter how much the rain is pouring, no matter how dark your night is, be encouraged, be patient. God is near. Verse 8 said he is near. He's at the door. He's at your house. He's with you. Some, sometimes I think we underestimate how close God is to our situation. It's like uh, when somebody is running across the road and they're about to get hit and you think, oh my gosh, where is the police when you need one, right? And you, 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 you blink your eyes and then you see the red and blue. And you're like, oh, yep, got them, get them, get them, right? You didn't see them before, but those police was there. You may not see God in the way that you want to see him, but he's near. He said he's near to the brokenhearted. He rescues those that were crushed in spirit. That's Psalms 34 and 18. So don't dim your light during your storm. Be that lighthouse. You know why we have lighthouses? You know why they sit on the cliffs? So when the storm happens and the ships are trying to make it home, they can see the light. They can see the way in. So when you're in your storm, somebody else is probably in a storm too. Be that lighthouse. Shine so that others can see the light of God. It's not time to just, oh, it, you know, God knows my heart. Yeah, and he asking you to have the right heart. He asking you not to jaywalk and just run across the street. You can find that peace in God. Verse 10, it says, for he gives us examples of patience. Dear brothers and sisters, look at the prophet who spoke in the name of the Lord. They endured suffering like Job. We know about Job. So I have a few questions here. Has anyone here like Job, had their business stolen from them and their employees killed by the thieves? No, no hands yet? Okay. Um, has anyone had the rest of their business consumed by fire and the rest of their employees also consumed in that fire? No hands? No, okay. Because, uh, you know, Job kept it, kept it together all the way through, right? Yeah, okay. So has anyone has their, had their vehicle stolen and the workers that were working on them also killed? Nope, nope, that's Job. Has anyone had all of their children killed by a freak, great wind, or a tornado all to, at one time? All 10 of your kids killed at one time, anyone? Nope, no hands? Okay. So Job went through all of this and still didn't curse God. Anyone have decaying body sores all over your body after all of that already happened to you? Nope, still no one? Anyone have your spouse tell you to curse God? Well, don't raise your hand, never mind. We'll move on, we'll move on. <laughs> scratch it, scratch that. Job's, Job's afflictions were evil done by people, evil done by nature, physical ailments, and he still didn't curse God. He still told his friends, I know my Redeemer live. What are you going through today, right now, before you came to church? What do you have to go back home to that isn't as bad as what Job went through? And God strengthened Job. He can strengthen you. Then there's another man in the Bible that his daddy sent him down to earth to die for these evil people. 
And he said, you know what, too, you know, um, I'm going to let them beat you all night long. Now, it's not the whooping that you got when you're growing up. This is a black and blue, bloody beating. I'm going to let them beat you so that those same evil people that you're going to die for, so they can be healed. My God. These examples that we have in the Bible of people that went through and still came through, still didn't jaywalk but crossed their road. We all have roads we have to cross. We all have roads we have to cross. You may not say amen, but we all have roads we have to cross. God is calling us higher, though. God has called his people. It's no mistake that you're here today. So whatever you're going through, God is calling you to make it through to the other side. To not get hit by the traffic that's coming your way. To not get taken out spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally. Because we all have roads we have to cross. Jesus, he endured. He endured his cross. So whether you're at a crossroad by your choices or something that God brought you to, God allowed Satan to do those things to Job. God may be allowing some things in your life. It's just a harsh reality. He may be allowing it. Or it may just be a result of some choices that you made. But he's also given us hope. He's given us examples. He's given us mentors. In the Message Bible, verse 10 and 11 says, take the old prophets as your mentors. They put up with anything, went through everything, and never once quit. All the time, honoring God. What a gift life is to those who stay the course. You have heard, of course, of Job staying power, and you know that God brought it all together for him at the end. He was restored with children. He was restored in his marriage. He was restored in his business. That's because God cares, and he cares right down to the last detail. Sometimes we need help crossing the street. You've seen people that maybe need help crossing the the actual street. Maybe they're blind. Maybe you're blind to some things that have happened in your life. And you need to reach out to someone to help you cross the street. Maybe you're too young and you're thinking, too naive, and you need some help crossing this particular road in your life. Maybe you think you're too old and you need someone younger to help you realize you're not too old. It's time to cross this road in your life. Maybe you're hurt and you need someone to help you across. Maybe you're chicken and you need to cross the road. (laughs) Maybe you're afraid of something, you got some fear, and you need someone to help you cross this road. God has sent help. He's sent examples in the Bible. He sent pastors, elders, and ministers, and deacons, and he sent that friend, and he sent that little child to say that word that you wouldn't expect them to send that word. And he sent a donkey in the Bible to tell one guy which way to go. So God cares about every detail, and he's sending help. It's just up to us not to choose the jaywalk. Amen. The Message Bible says he cares And since you know that he cares, let your language show it. Don't add words like, I swear to God, to your own words. Don't show your impatience by concocting oaths to hurry up God. Just say yes or no. Just say what is true. The way, that way, your language can't be used against you. So one of the other things that we can do is say what is true. It's all in what you say. We've not only got to walk the walk, we've got to talk the talk. You got to walk the walk and talk the talk. It's a clear message throughout the whole book of James. Pastor Alden preached about it. Pastor uh, Jonas preached about it. Pastor uh, Minister uh, Bruce preached about it. Minister Dorian preached about faith, and faith comes by hearing. And when no one else is around you, who's talking to you? It's you. You have to speak to your situation. You have to speak to yourself and say whether or not you're going to live or die and declare the works of the Lord. Amen? Amen. What is God's word saying about it? Or are you speaking doubt and fear and unbelief? Verse 13 says to pray. That's something or that's saying something to someone who can change your situation, who can calm your storm, who can give you peace. But you got to say something right. Don't jaywalk. In verse 13 
we're moving on here, and it says, are any of you suffering hardships, you should pray. Are any of you happy, you should sing praises. Take the small wins and praise God for them. How's your week going? Oh, I'm having a rough week, but I finally got my refund check. Well, praise God for the refund check. I know, but I, I still got to still pay my bills. But you got money? Praise God. He shouldn't hear your voice only when you need something, you want something, and you got to gotta change something, he got to move something. He should hear your voice when he woke you up this morning. Oh, thank you, God. That's a win. Oh, look, God, I'm walking around. That's a win. Oh, look, God, I can use my hands. That's a win. Sometimes the wins aren't the big things. Sometimes the wins is that, God, I'm still in my right mind. That's a win. Because I know some people that's not in their right mind. I know some people that have to stay in a cell. But you're in an apartment. You're in a house. You closed during the pandemic, and you're in a house, and you're still complaining. Help us, Lord. Help us to take the small wins and praise them. Any of you sick, you should call the elders in verse 14. It says in verse 16, to confess your sins. The message Bible says, make this your common practice. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you can live together, hold, and heal. Confess to your sins to each other. Now, this Bible, the Bible isn't saying here to confess your sins just anybody and everybody and whoever is going on. This is talking about your brothers and sisters in Christ. This is, some, this is talking about people that can minister to you, that can encourage you. They don't have to be a minister to minister to you, to encourage you. Confess your sins to each other. Pray for each other. I always hear these, uh, when I go to different marriage um, conferences and everything, and this always seems to be like, some couples are like, oh, we don't pray together, and some couples are like, oh, we pray together, and all this thing like that. But if you're married, then that's one person that you can definitely, should be able to confess to each other and pray for each other. If you can't get vulnerable with that person, I'm praying for you. But whether it's your friend, whether it's your brothers and sisters, Pastor David uh, commissioned all of the leaders to form trios, prayer trios. Uh, and so if you're a leader here, you should be having that group of people that you can pray with, the people that you should be where you can f confess with. These things will help you get to the other side of the road in life. Finally, as we continue on, Elijah, they said, was human. And he prayed earnestly that it wouldn't rain. And it didn't rain for three and a half years. We take some of these things lightly. But let me tell y'all, I was here Friday. We uh, had a text out to all of the men in our, in our youth group, all of the men that volunteer, and I said, hey guys, we got to move all this stuff for, so we can start crew next week. <clears throat> Crickets for like a whole week. I was like, oh, okay, uh, I'm not going to be able to move all this furniture by myself. And so finally, uh, I did get a couple of responses, and Jeremiah and Fred, they showed up on Friday, and as soon as we started getting in our groove, it started clouding over. And then it started drizzling, and I'm like, God, Elijah prayed. And it didn't rain for three and a half years. I don't care how small it may seem, God. I don't need it to rain right now. I, we, we need to finish this. I finally got some help, God. I need you to work this out for us. And it wasn't before long that somebody else had came up and they said, look how clear it is outside. And I realized God had answered that prayer. As simple as it was in my life. I feel like sometimes if we take things to God that seem small for God, and have that faith, when it's time to take bigger things to God, we'll be a little quicker with it. We'll have a little more faith about it. So many things come to us in life where we must pray and seek God about what he's doing in our life. Now, God could have chosen not to stop that rain, but I believe, and this is what I said to God, I said, Elijah prayed, so I'm going to pray. But if not, I know you will make a way. 
I know you'll send some other guys. I know somebody else will respond to my text. I know you, just like you sent Fred and I wasn't expecting Fred, you'll send somebody else because this is what I'm called to do. This is what we need to do. This, we need to have our, our, our setup for our children so we can minister to our children and minister to our youth. God, I'm in your purpose. I'm walking the path that you've given me so you will make a way even if it does rain. It can storm in your life, but God. God will make a way out of no way. It may not be the way that you are expecting or the way that you want it to happen or when you want it to happen or who you want it to happen with. But his divine, all-knowing, all-wise, always on time will take care of that for you. You've got to say something to him. You've got to believe that he'll do it. And you've got to choose not to jaywalk. Lastly, here are the last two verses. I'm wrapping it up here. My dear brothers and sisters, if someone among you wonders from the truth and is brought back, you can be sure that whoever brings that sinner back from wondering will save that person from death. There are a lot of things that are happening in our lives that hurt us, and sometimes people don't make it across the street. We pass by all the time, those balloons and the teddy bears and, and whatnot that's on the side of the road for somebody who did not make it across the street. We see people experience some things and they never come back quite the same from that experience. Sometimes we just wanna walk away. Sometimes we're impatient. We don't care anymore. We're too busy to be dealing with some of this stuff but if we can confess to our brothers and sisters where we are, maybe one of them can help us across this road in our life. If we could not grumble or complain, if we can just pray and praise, if we can just trust God, he can save us physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. We can be restored. Our families can be restored. Our children can be restored. Our coworkers can be restored. In Luke 18, he talks about the persistent widow, and it's a widow that can't, kept on coming to this unrighteous judge. And finally, the, the, he said, you know, just, just help her. Just, just, you know, she was just like, who can help me? And the unrighteous judge turned her away a few different times, and he said, I'm just tired of her nagging. So think about a God who is a righteous judge. Won't he stick up for you? But in Luke 18, it says, but who will have that kind of persistent faith that the Son of Man can find when he returns? When it comes to your situation, will you have that faith? So I'm encouraging you today, as Joshua 1 and 8 says, to study the book of instruction continually. The laws that God has set for in our lives, study them, meditate on, on them day and night so that you will be able to obey everything that's written in them. Only then you will prosper and succeed in all you do. You want to get across this road in your life? Study God's word and all, that you, and all that he's written for you. In Leviticus 18 and 4, it says, You shall follow my rules and keep my statutes and walk in them. I am the Lord, your God. God's not just about the do's and the don'ts. The don't list was a lot shorter than the do list. I'm not sure if it was on the screen if you saw it or not. In Isaiah 30, this last verse here, it says, whether you turn to the left or to the right, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for the opportunity today, God, to hear your words. We thank you, God, for the opportunity, God, to make it across this road in our life, this trial, this tribulation, this hardship, God, whatever is in our life, God, that we feel like we just can't face it, God. God, maybe we should stop facing it on our own, God. Maybe we need to seek out the mentors that you've given us in your holy word. Maybe we need to seek out the elders if we're sick in our body, if we're sick in our mind, God. Have them anoint us. Have them pray for us, God. Help us across this road, God, this morning. Whatever we're going through, whatever situation, God, it, no matter how dim it may seem, no matter how stormy it may be, God, no matter if the clouds are coming, God, we thank you, God, that you care. God, we thank you that you care in every little detail, God. Nothing's hidden from you, God. 
Nothing's too small. Nothing's too big. You are the Lord God. So help us, God, not to jaywalk, not to run across this road just all haphazardly, God. Let us not just look at the lights in the, in the, in the big fancy city, God, but to focus our attention on you, God. When we should go, when we should walk, God, where we should walk, what we should say, God. Encourage our hearts this morning, God. Help us not to be impatient, God, but to trust you in timing for our lives, God. Timing for that job, that house, those children, God, that marriage, God. Whatever it is, God, that we're struggling with today, God. We thank you, God, that you're here for us and you care. We thank you, God, that you give us hope, God. That it's not just about us, God, but help us also to pray for our sisters and brothers, God, and confess our sins to them, God, and be that lighthouse for those that are also in the storm of life, God. May we accomplish everything that you set us out to do, God, so that we may prosper and succeed in all we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.